What's up, Fox Trotters? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you're new here, welcome, welcome. Maybe consider subscribing before you leave today. If you're returning, hello. It's nice to see you all again. You guys look great. Yes, you person who's clipping your toenails and minding your own business, only to have a piece of your own toenail project out out of the clippers, nailing you right between the eyes. Don't act like this has never happened to you. You look great. All right, I hope everybody is having a wonderful day, and I hope you are ready for an r slash anti-MLM trash video. It is super early in the morning. The sun is not up. I have my coffee. The dogs are eating breakfast, so if you hear any weird crunchings in the background, that's what that is. Anyways, without further ado, let's go ahead and just get into some MLM trash and enjoy our morning or afternoon or night, whenever this is for you. I hope you're having a good Monday. <laughs> I have a huge announcement. Oh, sorry, guys. It is too early for me to do that right now. Oh, man. <laughs> well, unfortunately, new info about Thrive has come to light, and all I can say is, I am so sorry. It has come to my attention that there are a lot of problems being reported from people who are taking Thrive products. So please, take time to read the following before you jump on the Thrive train. I feel it's only fair to be totally honest, since I've plastered your newsfeed for the last four and a half years with Thrive this, Thrive that... Just a few problems you may encounter by taking Thrive. Number one, you may have to buy a new wardrobe because you've lost weight. No, it's not a diet program. It's a benefit. Lean muscle. What? Number two, you may have to get your hair and or nails done more often because they're growing like crazy. Number three, you may actually want to work out, clean the house, work on the yard, play with your kids, and stay up past 10 p.m. because you have so much natural energy. Um, the only reason why I'm going to stay up past 10 p.m. is because something fun's going on. If it's sleepy time, it's sleepy time. Like, I, um, number four. You may have to throw out your alarm clock with the snooze button because you will wake up refreshed and ready to start your day before it goes off. Is that before or after you finally go to bed at night? Because apparently you're supposed to stay up all night with this stuff. I don't know about you, but that sounds a little weird, don't you think? Number five, you may lose your relationship with soda, coffee, energy drinks, and candy bars because you won't feel the same way about them anymore. Wow, so this stuff also reprograms the way you feel about those items, apparently. It's seriously magical. Number six, you may have to answer a lot of questions like, wow, you look great, don't you dare take my tagline. I take personal offense to that. Um, <laughs> this is really ridiculous. When I first started reading it, I really was like, oh man, wow, we're about to have like a hun come full circle in the middle of it. We're going to see the turnaround. She's going to say, I'm so sorry. I read about the ingredients. Uh, nobody should be taking that much caffeine in a day. Uh, so on and so forth. No, 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 that's not it. This was not, this wasn't one of those moments. Uh, I don't know why I was hopeful for that. No, no, this is exactly what you expected. Um, misinformation, uh, smugness, bad attitude. It's great. It's really cool. No, I bet she's really cool. And I'm sure all her friends and family who have had to see her thrive post for four and a half years were like so happy to see this message. And I'm sure everyone totally understood and was really understanding. My year-long experience in an MLM. Oh, hold on. Let me grab a sip of coffee real quick. I'm going to need it. If you have a cup of coffee or a cup of tea or a juice or a water, cheers. Oh, that's good. I wanted to post on here to show my gratitude to this community because it helped my wife and I disconnect from what was ultimately a bad decision on our part. A little backstory. I'm in business for myself in real estate, and about a year and a half ago, my wife was a police officer. Because of some extremely inconsistent training, she decided policing was not for her, and she took this very hard. To cheer her up, I took her to the movies one evening, where we met a couple. It was a pretty normal conversation, and I had a, made a habit out of conversing with anyone I met because of my work as a realtor. A couple of days later, I receive a call from the wife of the couple, and she tells me about this business opportunity her and her husband have. I would very much consider myself an entrepreneur, so I let her tell me about this business opportunity. Long story short, she hits me with the met a couple who retired at a young age line. You guys can guess the company. Go ahead, down below. If you can guess the company right now, go ahead. I'll give you a second. Do, 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 do. Down below right now. What company do you think this is? <laughs> because of how my wife was feeling and my experience in business, we decide to meet with them and find out what this is. Dun, dun, dun. 
Oh, that's a lot of words. It is too early. Hold on, I gotta get the sleep out of my eyes. It's a little blurry. Okay, there we go. After a few weeks of being vetted, we realize that it's an MLM. But because the husband is very successful and makes great income in his own business outside the MLM, I figure that there must be something I'm missing. So we decide to give it a shot. At first, it was sunshine and rainbows and daisies everywhere. Life was going great. We slowly cut ties with those we deemed unsupportive, and even we told our families we'd likely spend less time with them because of how serious we were about our dreams. We filled our calendars with weekly meetings and monthly events that were unmissable, and these were given priority over any family events or any gatherings with friends. To our surprise, we saw success very early on, and we were used as an example of how you can grow your MLM business fast. We cut out music and instead listened to different audio tapes of those who were deemed successful in the MLM. We only bought products from ourselves. We talked to everyone we met about this couple that we had met and who were changing our lives. Oh man, if you can't guess which MLM this is, I don't know. I, I have a good guess. At, at the end of this, I'll give my guess. If you, if you haven't guessed yet, guess down below. Which MLM do you think this is? <laughs> we were brainwashed so fast, we never knew what hit us. We read books. We said how high when they asked us to jump. We spent so much time with this couple and their team that we became an example of how to run your business and others were put down by not following our example. However, as time passed, we noticed a few things changing. When we were hanging out with our upline, the wife could not stop herself from talking to people in public and trying to basically recruit them or contact. Soon after, they were holding team meetings dedicated to help getting people on their teams to get higher paying jobs so that no one would have any excuses to not hit their volume. These were just things real business owners did, so we were ashamed if we ever came up. We'd pay hundreds of dollars for conferences and were basically forced to attend their Sunday services where we were told we wouldn't succeed if we weren't saved. What? And of course, the guy who ran the conference was the guy giving the service as if he were some prophet. Wow, okay, I definitely know which MLM this is. Yep, I have my guess. I'll let you guys know when we're done reading this one. Now, about a year later, we had hit a certain amount of success, and I was asked to speak about how even though I had success with real estate, I chose to work my business in this MLM outside of my real estate business to show just how hard and unlikely it is to actually be successful and achieve freedom through a traditional business. I agreed. But as I was talking in front of 200 people about this decision, I realized that none of what I was saying was true. I loved real estate. I loved having my own business. I loved the grind. I loved being able to show that I had built my own company from the ground up, and I honestly knew that it wasn't as hard as I had made it out to be. I realized right then and there that two months prior, my wife was aching to leave, that we had missed so many family events, that we had cut out lifelong friends, that we had gotten a couple thousand dollars in debt ordering products to hit our goals, that they had darn near tried to force us into an extreme form of Christianity and that God wanted us to do what we were doing. They had turned our world upside down within 12 months because we were in a vulnerable place. I just gotta say, you guys have heard me say before, not a religious person, 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 that too. Um, but I feel like the Christians that I do know don't behave like this and would not support this kind of behavior at all. My wife and I are both college educated. She has her master's and makes over 100000 in the legal industry, and I own a business in which I make 200000 a year in real estate. Wow, you kids are doing great. You don't need this company. I say this not to brag, but to instead show that even people like us can fall for these tactics. And it's up to us to save those who have been sucked into this black hole of brainwashing. Well, I can stand that. To those who are preyed upon and feel like these people are your friends and you need them, know that you are already strong and can do whatever it is you want to do and not have to use the same tactics on other people. To those who are made to feel inadequate and that you are not man enough because you haven't made millions yet, know that there are people who love and cherish you the way you are. And to the couples who are made to feel that they must follow the path of another couple deemed successful by an industry, remember that you are together because the universe already has a plan for you. And it's not to sell an MLM product or to introduce yourself to another couple at a Target to tell them a crazy story about how you connected to a couple who retired in their 30s. Live your lives in whatever way makes you happiest, not in whatever way makes your upline happy. It's not worth it. Oh, that was such a good story. The way he wrote that, perfect. I love that little line there, like to everybody out there, if you're in an MLM or you got out of an MLM and you're feeling some type of way, let me tell you what, exactly what this guy says. To those who are made to feel inadequate, 
just know that there are people who love and cherish you the way you are. Oh, that is so great. We can all take away something wonderful from this story. Absolutely. All right, let's go ahead. What MLM do we think this is? I'm going to go Amway. I bet it's Amway. If you put Amway or Worldwide Dream Builders down below, well, then a high five for you because you are definitely spot on. <laughs> got these as a lovely gift from my mom is it even a good idea to use these i honestly don't know uh my experience with mlm products have been that they are mediocre at best and uh break me out at worst so you could probably use whatever you already have if you have like a bottle of clean and clear or something sitting around it's probably just as good as the mary Kay stuff i'm gonna go on a limb and assume that if you do like these products and you've used them and you like them, feel free to let us know below. Again, everybody's skin is different, like completely different. So honestly, whatever works for you is great. <laughs> if you love this, that's great. Um, my instinct though is to just be kind of a little wary. You know, I, I tend to be a little sensitive with fragrances and uh, there's, there's certain additives to things uh, that can make me kind of break out. Um, I'm really sensitive like coconut oil makes me break out like I'm one of those people so I have to be really careful so my instinct would be to like say no thanks I'm good but I don't know uh, if this works for you let us know maybe maybe it's fantastic skincare but I kind of doubt it you've got to try this miracle cure it's amazing how do you know it works well I took it then I felt better how do you know that it's not just a placebo effect because I took it. Then I felt better. Isn't it possible that your body just took care of itself? No, because I took the miracle cure. Then I felt better. What about confounding factors? Isn't it possible that you feel better because of some other medication, diet, exercise, etc.? But I took the cure. Then I felt better. I'm not denying that you took the cure. And I'm not denying that you feel better. But that doesn't mean that the cure is the reason that you feel better. There are many possible explanations. And it is not logically valid to assume that it was the cure. In fact, doing so is a logical fallacy known as post hoc ergo propter hoc. The fact that you felt better after taking the cure could be a complete coincidence. Well, I love this. I mean, it says it straight into the point. Uh, because that's probably the number one argument Huns who are on the supplement train or even the essential oil Huns. This is kind of their platform that they take. Like, well, I was feeling very bad. I didn't feel good. I was tired and sluggish and overweight, whatever, fill in the blank, right? And then they took whatever, again, fill in the blank. They took something and it all of a sudden, whatever the problem was, goes away. Oh my God, it must be that item. It couldn't possibly be the fact that you have kidneys, liver, you have a system that naturally detoxifies your body. It's pretty magical. You know, uh, it just kind of detoxes on its own, which is really cool when you think about it. Uh, one of my favorite sections in my uh, biology, my human biology lab last term was when we got to kidneys. I don't know about you, but kidneys are really impressive and very special. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I just love seeing stuff like this because we all know, we've all probably heard it if you ever kind of like read up on any of the Hun arguments or any of those, those products, those supplements, whatever. I'm sure you've heard this argument before. I'm sure you've heard them attempt to use correlation uh, ubiquitously like causation. And that is just, they are not the same. Correlation does not equal causation. <sighs> okay, all right, yes. Love this cartoon. <laughs> I have allergies to bug bites, which range from mild mosquitoes to severe wasps, hornets, etc. I'm looking for an insect repellent advice. What do you all use? I use Avon Skin So Soft oil after my shower. I haven't had bites in years. Now, I will say for many a year and sometimes occasionally, I will still hear people talking about Avon Skin So Soft and referring to it as the best insect repellent that they've ever used. Uh, I don't know anything about that. I've never used it. I have not a clue. But if you have used this product and you think it's a good product, please let us know because I have found, interestingly enough, that this is something, this product keeps coming up. I keep hearing about it. People that I know and trust and I think are reliable mention this product. So that kind of perturbs me a little bit. But I don't know. Uh, if you know more about this product, go ahead and let me know below. Enlighten us. And recently I have been getting a few questions from you guys asking if Avon is in fact an MLM. And uh, 
Yeah, it is. I don't know if it has always been that way or if it changed its business structure at some point, but it absolutely is a multi-level marketing company. And as you can read there, uh, it is the fifth largest beauty company and with 6.4 million representatives, it is the second largest direct selling enterprise in the world after our favorite one, Amway. Uh, oh. Yeah, so it is what it is. And I think at some point I will want to do an Avon deep dive just because like my grandma was into Avon. Even my mom when she was younger was into Avon. Like a lot of people that I know back in the day were into Avon. So at some point it was a very trusted company. And I would just love to research that fallout. Like what happened? Is Herbalife an MLM slash pyramid scheme? I know there's a lot of beauty products out there that are absolute garbage. Is Herbalife one of them? My girlfriend's sister has been working for them for about 10 years, according to my girlfriend, but I always figured working for an MLM could never last that long before people realized what they were doing slash lost all their money. Well, first things first, uh, yes, Herbalife is absolutely an MLM. I did not know that they do beauty products, so that's news to me. And this might come off a little harsh and perhaps I am projecting here. However, it does seem to be a trend for people who are actually successful in MLMs, the people that actually make it that last years, apparently a decade in your girlfriend's sister's case. Unfortunately, the truth of the matter is, is if they've made it this far, this long, odds are they probably know what they're doing and they're probably not exactly being super awesome. I, like, I don't want to say outright that your family member is not a good person. I, I don't want to dare go that route. I'm just saying that in order to do well in these companies, you have to do some really crappy stuff. You have to be kind of crappy. And that's how you make it, right? The people that we see in MLMs, the only ones who actually succeed are the people who are screwing everybody else over, unfortunately. Okay, this is interesting. I did not know this before. I've always kind of wondered, so now we have an answer. All right, so someone says MLM is not business ownership, and this hun claps back with, well, actually, you file a 1099, so technically and legally, yes, it is. Okay, that's great and all, but let's go ahead and look at the comments below this because people were very kind and informed us on what all this means because I don't know anything, let's be real. 1099s are for independent contractors or landlords, not business owners. And then someone down below says, <clears throat> 1099 miscellaneous is just a method of reporting non-employment income. Small businesses, independent contractors, Uber drivers, and the like will all get them if the company they received money from paid more than $600. 1099 miscellaneous box 7 checked is the most common and will be reported on a Schedule C or with a small business filing 1120S or similar. I don't know what that is. I'm so sorry. <laughs> you can take then the business deductions. So it's kind of. From the federal government's perspective, you're a business. Your state, though, will often not see it as a company, just you. Okay, I find that really interesting. That's good to know. I've often wondered, is it a business? Is it, like, do they actually get to legally claim? And it looks like, technically speaking, they are recognized as a business, but only by the federal government. It appears that the state doesn't often see it that way. Uh, I don't know. I find that very interesting. If you have any further info on 1099s, please feel free to enlighten us because Lord knows I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> First of all, please God, let this be satire. Second of all, if it's not satire, I don't like this person. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> I never heard a blank head say, I ain't got no money, so I ain't using today. They always find a way. So you gotta let a blank head out hustle you today. My dude, do not make me have to spell out how people in those positions get money. We all know. We're not dummies. Are you implying that somebody who is in an MLM should do a similar hustle to how, say, someone who had a problem and maybe lived on the street and maybe didn't have any money, right? Are you implying that we should do what they're doing? Is that... What kind of terrible advice is this? And I like that little uh, image right near the bottom where it says, serving realness, like real who, real where? That's none of what you said is real. What an absolute jerk. <laughs> 
Hey, I just wanted to let you know that my Cutco girl will be giving you a call. She is paying her way through college showing Cutco. There's no pressure. Just listen and she gets credit. I thought you would be nice enough to help. She is super sweet. I like how you can see she sent that message to 12 other people. 12 other people got that exact message. Oh, how personable. Uh, such a natural conversation. And frankly, if this were my friend... I think I would be really upset at them because I don't like my personal information being just given out willy-nilly. It's really not like my style. I don't just give people my phone number, right? So for her, just for this person just to give it out and think it's really okay and that's totally fine. Like, just so you know, my cut cold girl will be giving you a call. Like, oh, honey, no. Like, if we were friends, I would have to have a conversation with this person and tell them, like, look, I love you. It's great that you're into this and you like your knives. Please do not involve me any further, please. Like, and if they have a problem with that, well, that's something, uh, well, that's a bridge you have to cross when you get there, I suppose, right? A friend of mine is an online health coach, and I was cool with it until she started posting this garbage. Instead of being like most close-minded and negative people, I researched red labels and compared and tried it for myself. Now, over two years later, I'm the most healthy I've ever been, and even t working towards quitting the retail world to work as an online health coach. I'm tired already from reading this. <laughs> oh my god, it's so long. Okay, here we go. My question is pretty simple. If you're my people, how in the actual blank have you still not supported me yet you can go to the smoothie store and pay double the price every day for something that isn't as bomb as what I drink daily? How is it you'd rather get the toxic energy drink from the corner store instead of supporting and believing in me and what I ingest daily? No chemical blank storm, straight up magical energy. How do you say no to all natural muscle repair and continue to chew down convenience store protein bars? How can you tell your spouses no to them wanting to join me in working out at home and following life-changing habits to live healthier lives and finding their happiness how can you tell yourselves no to self-care listen i'm just keeping it real because that's how i am and my own self needed someone to be real with me i truly want all of my people to find this inner bad blank and get living healthy for a long blank time my god there were a few points while reading that sorry squeaky chair there were a few points while reading that where i was trying to convince myself that this was satire right this was fake but it seems like the more i read it the more real it became Phew, i'm still holding out the hope <laughs> that this is totally fake and this is satire and someone is being funny but based off what the OP said, I think this might be real. And that is a tragedy. <laughs> Holy cow. I don't even know what to say after that. My jaw just hit the floor. Hit the floor. Blame everybody for why your business isn't doing great. That's how you sell stuff. Tell your family and friends that they're terrible at supporting you because they don't want to buy your smoothies. What on earth? If I treated any of my friends like that, any of them, they would never speak to me again. Like, they would be like, what happened to you? Bye. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, man. Arbonne's really trying to pretend like people want this. Like, this is something delicious. If you know me at all, you will know my life is made. Okay. Wow. Simple person then, huh? Pop the rose champagne because my two favorite drinks ever have been combined. I can't actually cope. Rosé, champagne. Oh, those are her two favorite drinks. Rosé and champagne. All right. I mean, they're kind of the same thing. I do enjoy a rosé in the summertime. I like a frosé, you know. I like a champagne. Or even actually, I like Prosecco. I, I, think it, I think it's a little drier. I don't know if it actually is, but I tell myself that. Maybe it's because I like saying, oh, I'm drinking Prosecco. I don't know. <laughs> Rose Champagne Flavor Fizz coming 15th of January, and I'm taking pre-orders because last time a limited edition flavor was released, we broke the internet. That's a lie. That's not true. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. Look, if Kim Kardashian couldn't break the internet, your Rose Champagne Fizz drink didn't either, all right? Knock it off. Hashtag Fizz responsibly. Fizz is life. Rose... Broke the internet. You can't just say hashtag broke the internet when you didn't hashtag break the internet. Cool, guys. 
So dumb. And and I've heard from some of you, like one of your, like some of you have said that you love rosé, you love champagne, you're all about it, you think it's delicious, and you too are revolted by the idea of a rosé, champagne flavored, non-alcoholic health bubbly drink. Doesn't that sound awful? Because it does. <laughs> oh god. It's time for everyone's favorite segment of the video. It's time for the wholesome moment of the day. Let's see who you guys sent over. The animals featured in today's video are the rest of Chloe's clan. We saw her cat Chevy yesterday. Let's go ahead and read the email sent along with the other photos. The middle child is a tiny diva and a little miracle. Lily is the rare ginger female that we promised ourselves 12 years ago. We have never seen such a princess before. She is a lucky kitty. She was adopted from the SPCA and was in a foster home, so she wasn't in a cage before she came to us. That is lucky. The foster mother had over 20 cats and many dogs in her home, bless her, but our girl was a tiny little thing. At nearly five months, she still weighed two and a half pounds, so we think she was pushed over by bigger cats and was last to eat. Honestly, I think I eat potatoes bigger than that. Not anymore. She is so vocal and almost sings when it's mealtime, and any time is a good time for mealtime. Oh, same. <laughs> if we even go near the kitchen, she goes on singing. Lily will never go hungry again, but we'll make sure she doesn't get as big as Chevy. <laughs> and if you remember Chevy from yesterday, he was a little on the chubby side, a very stately chubby, but, you know, a little bit extra. <laughs> we love our extra kitties over here. I'm just saying. Uh, we stand extra kitties. Our baby and last child is Guru. He was the sweetheart of the rescue that we got him from, but he was such a scrawny little thing, even smaller than Lily when we got her. Bony, sickly, with a trouble tummy. Oh, he had already come close to crossing over the Rainbow Bridge a few times already, and it was a good idea to give him a family that could concentrate on his care full time. It was impossible to resist him. Impossible to resist his little face. His eyes. He has half moon eyes that make him look sad and pitiful all the time. But he has the most endearing personality ever. He's so happy, cuddly, and purrs so loudly. He's doing so much better now and we're hopeful of him having a long, amazing life with us. From my family to yours. Oh, Chloe, that is so fantastic. This is the kind of wonderful wholesome stuff i love kicking my monday off with i hope the rest of you got something nice out of that as well this is just a beautiful story and look at this guy's face seriously though and if you're looking to get a new member of your family i definitely recommend to adopt not shop check out your local shelters your local humane societies donate if you can volunteer if you can foster if you can and don't forget to spay new to your pets and if you want to see a photo of your pets here then go ahead and send it to my email in my channel description and you will see your pets here eventually all right, Fox Trotters, that's going to do it for me today. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you liked that video, please hit that like button down below. If you have any good comments or suggestions, please leave it down below as well. I love to hear what you have to say and I love interacting with you all. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and become a Fox Trotter. Come join the den. Den Mother would love to have you. All right, folks, I hope you found that video entertaining. I certainly did. I hope you are having a wonderful Monday. And if it's not going so swell, well, here's a hug for me to you and you are loved. And I am having an extra long mom's fridge section in one of my upcoming videos. Uh, I haven't decided which video yet, but soon it will be there just because I've gotten a little bit more fan art and I just want to give it a little more time to show off in my videos. You know, uh, just because you guys are so awesome for doing that and I'm so moved and honored and it makes me so weepy and just emotional every time I open something that you guys made for me, thinking of me like, oh my god. <laughs> oh, you guys are wonderful. All right, folks, as always, until the next video, take care.